Well, thanks for popping into one of those photos. And on this channel, we talk about cycling. And today we're going to be talking about tubulars and how to fit a tubular tire on a tubular rim. And if you're interested in those sorts of things, then remember to subscribe and also to ring that bell so you get all of the notifications and don't miss any more cycling content. Well, let's get into it and let's roll that intro and let's find out the easy way to fit a tubular tire on a tubular rim. Now, when you look at a tubular tire, it's actually completely sewn up, as you can see here, and there's a base tape that's stuck on the bottom that holds it all together where it's been stitched. You can't see the actual stitching because it's under this base tape. And if you actually look at the rim, the rim has not got any hooks on it like a clincher or a tubeless tire. The actual rim just has like a cup and the actual tire fits into that rim nicely from the curvature of the tire. And what actually holds it on is either contact cement or double-sided tape. Okay, putting the tape on the rim can be a little bit difficult. So to make it a bit easier so you can use two hands, use the bicycle as like a jig. So you can put the actual rim on the bike so the wheel can spin and then you can easily just stick the tape on. Now what you need to do is you need to start from the valve because the tape can't go where the valve is. So you just start at one side of the valve and you gradually work your way around the tire until you get back to the valve and then you cut it with some scissors. Now, remember not to remove the top tape. That comes off later. So all you do is just stick it on, you leave your top tape on, and you just go all the way around. And this goes really quickly. You don't need to have any tire leads or anything like that. You just basically stick the tape on. Now, before we rush in and put the tire on, the first thing we need to do, we need to actually get the ends of the top tape, and we need to fold them back. So you get the two pieces each side, and you actually fold them back 90 degrees. So when you actually put the tire in and you insert the valve into the valve hole, there's a little bit of the tape exposed so the actual tire can stick to the double-sided tape. But the rest of it is protected by the top tape. So you have these little bits of tape tipping, sticking out of each side of the tire, so you can actually then pull them later to activate the tape so it sticks the tire on. Now you've got the valve in the rim, you've got the rest of this tire sort of hanging out at the side. So what you need to do is you, you get your legs and you, you brace the actual whole rim between your feet and your body. And then what you do is, is you pull evenly each side and you stretch the tire. And you work your way around putting it onto the rim. And then when you get to the last little bit, you'll finally start to get tight. And you gradually just work the, rim, the tire around and until it's onto the rim. And then you finally get the last bit on and make sure it's just straightened up there so it's not twisted. Now we've got the tire on the actual rim, we want to check that it's nice and straight. So what we need to do is just pop it back into the bicycle frame and we just need to spin it. And you just need to check as you look around the actual tread, you can see if it's lined up and nice and straight. And if there's any parts that aren't, just lift them because it's still fairly flat. You can just lift it off the tape and just straighten it up. And, and try not to do this too much because you can actually make it worse. So you just work your way around. If you see any bits that are not perfectly straight, the you'll have to straighten them up. now. One thing you will find at the actual valve, you'll find that there will always be a misalignment. And of course you can't straighten it because you can't move the valve. So that little part there, you just have to live with it. It's just the rest of the tire you can straighten up. It's not critical. It doesn't, it's not like a clincher where it will be perfect and it doesn't need to be perfect. It's, it's just a bit, bit more of an aesthetic sort of a thing. Now, once you're happy with it being straight, what we need to do is, is then pump it up and just get it like seated because when you put a lot more pressure in it, it actually straightens itself up. So pump it up fairly, fairly hard to about like 90, 100 PSI, and it'll straighten itself. And then just recheck it again to make sure that it's nice and straight. Now, once you're happy with that, let the tire pressure down, and you need to let it down to maybe less than 40 PSI, to a pressure where you can actually lift, lift the tire off the rim. You can actually just pick it up, and you can actually pull it off, so it's not that rock hard. And once you've got it at this pressure, then what you need to do is, is you start pulling the tape. And you gradually, don't pull it too hard, because sometimes the tapes can break, but you just pull it evenly, consistently, and you work your way around the rim. And as you're doing this, the actual tape will be activated, and it will stick the tire on the rim. And once you get to the end, and you pull that all out, you spin it again, make sure it's straight before you put any more air in it, because it's only just sort of stuck a little bit, because you haven't got a lot of pressure in the tire. And if you're happy with that, then you pump it up and you can pump it up really, really hard, 100 PSI or more, 
maybe 110, 120, and it will really seat itself into the tape. And the good thing about tape, which I like, is the longer it's on the rim, the more sticky it gets. It actually seems to bed in as it goes. And you'll actually see, it actually gets squished out the side the longer you have it on and you get little bits of threads coming out. But that's a good thing. So unlike glue, which goes hard after a time and actually weakens, tape actually gets more sticky with time. So it does the opposite. So if you are using glue, remember you need to change that regularly. You can't just leave it years and years and years because it does harden. Now this all probably, for people who've never done it before, looks like a, big, a bit of a process, but it's actually not. And it's actually quite quickly, quick. It's actually quite quick how it goes. I actually can put a, a tire on a tubular rim quicker than I can put a clincher in because with a clincher, you need to make sure the tube is not being pinched and you need to use the levers to get it on. Some, some of the tires are very hard to get on and you don't want to pinch that tube. So you need to all make sure that the, the tube is in there nice and neat and the tire goes on and the tube hasn't been affected or pinched or creased or anything like that. So you need to spend that extra time if you want reliability with your clincher. But with tubulars, you just put the glue on, it's just stuck and it's stuck and you're ready, you're ready to roll. With tubular tape, there's no drying. You can put that straight on your bike and you can ride. So you're ready to go. Now, people may ask, you know, what do you do if on the side of the road? You don't put your tape on on the side of the road. You can if you want to. You can take tape with you if you like. It's not very heavy, but I don't. I just put the tire on. I just take the, the punctured tire off the rim and just put the tire on and you just pump it up. When they're at 90, 100 PSI, they're not going to be coming off unless you're going to your racing or doing a quit race, that's a little bit different. But if you're just riding home and you're just commuting, you can get home easily with the tire just pumped up with nothing holding it on and it will stay in place. So guys, that's how simple it is. And it actually is pretty simple. Don't be scared of buying tubular rims and tubular tires because you can actually get them at really good value. Uh, tubular tires are a little bit more expensive than clincher, but what you need to consider is you're getting a, a tube which has a removable valve so if you're buying a tube for your clincher with a removable valve they're actually a bit more expensive you normally have to pay about 15 aussie and then you still got to buy your tire so when you actually look at the difference in price it's not that much it may be you know 15 20 dollars a tire extra so you go what's the point of a removable valve the removable valves are really really handy especially with tubulars because you can use like a little plastic key and you can take them out and you can actually put sealant in them very easily. So if you get a puncture on the side of the road, what you can do is you can just take out the valve and you can just have a little, a little uh, bottle of stands or your favorite sealant, and you can just put your 30 to 60 mils in the tire and you'll find that that'll fix most punctures pretty quickly. And you just pump your air back in or use, I wouldn't use a CO2 container, I like to use pumps, but because I find that those things can be a bit aggressive, especially if you're trying to pump it up and you've got a puncture, sometimes they can make the puncture worse. But yeah, you put your sealant in, you, you pump it up, and you'll find that the sealant will actually seal the puncture, especially if you only put in like about 40 PSI, spin the tire, it'll seal it, and then you can start pumping it up further. So that's how you can fix tubulars on the side of the road, and a lot of times that'll save you save your tire, and you can just keep riding it on it like that, so it's really good, because it just acts like a, a tubeless tire, because the sealant runs in there all the time, and it will fix any more punctures for you. Well anyway, that's how you fit a tubular the easy way, and it's very, very simple. And if you're keen to run tubulars and you want to give it a try, I really, really recommend that the best way to use the tape, it's, it's good, it's easy, and it's reliable. Thanks for watching, guys.